Welcome to iLecture Online. Now what do we do when there are two layers of liquid? The top layer that has density 1 and the bottom layer that has density 2. And typically when you have more than one layer, the layer at top has the lowest density, so density 1 must be smaller than density 2. Notice that the object is floating because a portion of the object sticks above the liquid. And what if we want to find the density of the object? Hmm. Well, let's say here also that the object has a square top, so it's L by L. That's the area of the top, and that the height of the object is equal to H. Notice that the amount of the object below the surface in contact with the first layer of the liquid is X. That height is X, and this height here would be Y. So this would be X, and this distance from there to there would be Y. That's the amount submerged in each of the two liquids. We still use the same concept that the buoyancy force is equal to the weight of the displaced liquid, which is equal to mg of the liquid, which is equal to rho vg, because we know that the density is equal to mass divided by the volume, which means that the mass is equal to the density times the volume. So this would be the density of the liquid, the volume submerged in the liquid times g, that's what offers up the buoyancy force. Since there are two different layers of liquid and two different densities, there must be two different portions of the buoyancy force. So you can see that we have the weight of the object, mg, and that we have the buoyancy force offered up by the first layer, bf1, and we have a buoyancy force because of the second layer, bf2. And I would say that the buoyancy force BF2 is probably greater than BF1 because the density of that layer is greater and so therefore there would be a greater buoyancy force because you would have a greater weight of the displaced liquid. Greater weight because there's a greater density. All right, so that means that the total buoyancy force, buoyancy force total is equal to the sum of buoyancy force 1 plus buoyancy force 2 and in this case since the object is floating the total buoyancy force must equal to the weight of the object so this can be then written as mg of the object is equal to the buoyancy force due to layer 1 which is going to be density 1 times volume 1 times g plus buoyancy force 2 will be density 2 volume 2 times g and right away we can see that there's a G everywhere, so you can cancel all the G's. Now let's calculate the volumes for the amount of the liquid that's displaced for layer 1 and for layer 2. Say that the mass of the object is equal to density 1 times volume 1, which is going to be the cross-section area, L squared, times the height in the liquid, which is X, plus density 2 which is volume 2, volume 2 would be L squared times Y. And that's going to be equal to the mass of the, of the object. But we want to know the density of the object. And we know that the density of the object is equal to the mass divided by the volume. That would be the mass of the object divided by the volume of the object which is equal to the mass divided by L square H. L square H would be the total volume of the object. The density of the object is equal to the mass divided by the volume, which is L square H. And we know that the mass is equal to this. So this would be equal to density of the first layer times L square X plus density of the second layer times L square Y divided by the volume of the whole object, L square H. And then you can see that all the L squares cancel. And finally, we can then say that the density of the object, if it floats in a multi-layer substance, in this case, we just took two layers, that would be equal to the density of the first layer times how much or how deep it is in the first layer plus the density of the second layer times how much or how deep it is in the second layer divided by the total height of the object. And that's how we find 
the density of the object in case the object is floating in a multi-layer substance. You can imagine that if there's three layers or four layers or five layers, you would just keep on adding that to the numerator, plus density three times the distance in the third layer, plus density four times the distance in the third layer, all divided by the total height of the object. So you can see that this can be applied to even more than two layers as well. And that's how it's done.